It's Wednesday, Blunts Over Bullshit. Let's stay lifted above all things. We are here to inform you, give you some knowledge, passion, and gifts. You know, I just love running my mouth, so I'm here. (laughs) Smoke something great. And we want to pick up on the bullshit from last week and all the toxins. So I'm just here to inform you so you can live a more positive, better life and cut out the bullshit. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a lot of bullshit in the world, but the more you cut out, the better you'll feel. So here I go dropping some knowledge on this lovely Wednesday. It just literally poured on me, so I'm a little wet. Excuse, you know, this crazy weather here. But if you're still using a microwave in 2017, you're crazy because it's just YouTube is here for us, you know, Google, so many other great informational tools for us to elevate our minds and cut out the bullshit that the corporations, the companies and, you know, the government have been giving us for years. So that's my duty. And I'm here in the microwave. Yeah, it heats up your food really quickly. And, you know, for all you lazy people, we got to make time to do right by our bodies, by the universe, by the earth. So cut out the bullshit, smoke a blunt, and put your food in the oven. You know what I mean? The toaster oven, the regular conventional oven, the stovetop. Because anything that you put in the microwave is dead, and it's killing you. So... We're going to eat some rainbows, and we're going to go to some news for you, and then I'll come back and give you some more of my good old brains. Yes. Once over bullshit, people. Stay with me. Warning. Please read the warning we make in the more information section of our channel. We aren't responsible for the information herein. The shocking truth about why you should stop using the microwave. In brief moments a written explanation. The microwave is one of the most incredible technological inventions of recent years, because thanks to it can be heated food in a short time and of course, you can make popcorn. Much has come into controversy about whether the use of this electronic device is good or bad, as it is said that can cause cancer. To get rid of doubts about the microwave. In this video we will give you 5 reasons why you should stop using the microwave oven. Of course the last word is yours, so you can choose not to use it or use it less. 1. End the food nutrients. The process of heating food in the microwave changes its molecular structure and decreases its nutritional value. The microwave causes any food to lose its properties in addition to causing difficulties to the digestive system to process the food ingested. 2. Dash change the structure of breast milk and eliminate vitamin B12. Studies have shown that heating the breast milk in the microwave produces a higher growth of harmful bacteria. Milk, at high temperatures, is 18 times more likely to contain E. coli, a bacteria that can negatively affect our gut. 3 releases carcinogens many of the plastic containers used to heat foods contain toxins and chemicals harmful to the body the heat of the microwave causes these substances to be released from the plastic and to stop in the food 4. it affects your blood studies have also found that consuming products heated in the microwave causes our blood cell levels to decrease and cholesterol increases 5. damage your heart rate Microwave radiation greatly affects your heart rate. People who are exposed to radiation have claimed to experience symptoms such as, insomnia, sleep disorders, night sweats, headaches, dizziness, depression, loss of appetite, etc. As you can notice the microwave is not so good for our health, but without a doubt the decision of each household you have, if you can avoid and the least use this device your body will thank you. If you like the video and you think it can help you, I invite you to give it a like, share the video with your friends and subscribe to it. Yes. So, as they just gave you five bullshit ass reasons why to not use a microwave. But there are literally over a hundred reasons. Why am I so adamant and passionate about getting on this 
awesome radio show every Wednesday is because I was born in a household where my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer. So at nine years old, we had to throw all of, a lot of shit away. And I didn't understand what was going on, why we couldn't use a microwave, why we couldn't use aluminum foil anymore, why we couldn't eat regular bread. So my grandmother broke it down to me. And she's like, I can't keep going through chemo because it's another form of radiation. And I want to go the holistic way. So how can I do this? Because the chemo was killing her. They gave her six months to live. And she had kids to take care of, like me, my little sister, because my grandparents raised me, OK? So I've been living a different lifestyle and elevating my mind ever since a young child. In the microwave, whether it's breast milk or regular milk, it is mutating anything that you put in it. And it is turning your body and your cells carcinogenic. It's making you not be able to process your foods. It's also messing with your blood flow, the level of oxygen you have in your blood, and so many other things. So it is your choice, but be aware, think before you do some bullshit, you know, because they want us to purchase these things, these household, you know, products, so you can make your life so-called easier. But ask yourself, is it easier? Because uh, it's going to get you sick in the long run. So hmm, the choice is yours. Be smart. Smoke a blunt. Take some time out. Do some prepping. You know, food is life. Food is kills you. Anything green like ganja, yes, it cures your soul. So if you take a fruit or a vegetable and you nuke it in the microwave, no nutrients. So you're not getting the food for your soul. You know, whatever. I'm going to continue to hit my blunt and it's just something for you to think about, you know. In other news around this city, <clears throat> I've been just Trying to stay out of the rain, <laughs> stay dry. Because <laughs> you never know when the showers in the sky is going to open and pour. Like, seriously, for real. So you got to wear. I mean, normally when I was growing up in D.C., like July and August is the most muggiest, humid. Like, it's like, <sighs> for real, you outside and you be like, <sighs> You just start immediately sweating, right? Now, you know, all of July, after 7 o'clock, I had to find me a jacket or something to throw on because I was like, it's like, is it fall or is it summer? It's a little chilly out here, but it's cool. Still living. I'm happy. No complaints. <laughs> Go make some, you know, edibles or something. Get high, stay high. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so, you know, nobody else thinks nothing's wrong with the weather, but hey, cool, whatever. Just smoke my butt. <laughs> Stay lifted. Yep, that's pretty much what I do. Yeah, yeah, and it's awesome. But we said we're gonna touch bases on some awesome restaurants throughout the city. So we have the lovely waterfront down on the wharf. If anyone is able to explore, spark them a blunt, a spliff, take it with them, you know, hit it when the security's not looking. Because <laughs> at first, it was cool down there. They weren't on, they weren't on the press. But lately, the last two weeks, like, I mean, I went down there and I'm like, hey, I've been doing this for like six, seven months now, guys. Like, rolling through, smoking my ganja, enjoying the breeze, sitting on the swings. Such an awesome invention for big kids like me. I think a lot of other people in D.C. love it. So if you haven't gotten out, please go visit the wharf. Stop by Hank's because they have an amazing happy hour. Well, kind of amazing. But just check it out because I love seafood. So that's why it's like my little spot sometimes. And I know people. So, yeah, you check it out. They have some amazing specials on certain days, like a frozen Moscow mule thingy. I really like cocktails. If it was infused, it would really be good. So what I did was I just bought some tincture that I made. Always keep it in my purse. Does the body good. Elevates you, uplifts you. All those great things. Keeps you focused. And just added a drop, and it just boosted my, the rest of my day. You know? It's amazing. Yes. So we're going to eat some more rainbows, and we're going to go to another 
informational section so you can find out. Drop in some news, fun silver bullshit. This is a story about a world obsessed with stuff. It's a story about a system in crisis. We're trashing the planet, we're trashing each other, and we're not even having fun. The good thing is that when we start to understand the system, we start to see lots of places to step in and turn these problems into solutions. One of the problems with trying to use less stuff is that sometimes we feel like we really need it. What if you live in a city like, say, Cleveland, and you want a glass of water? Are you going to take your chances and get it from the city tap? Or should you reach for a bottle of water that comes from the pristine rainforest of Fiji? Well, Fiji brand water thought the answer to this question was obvious. So they built a whole ad campaign around it. It turned out to be one of the dumbest moves in advertising history. You see, the city of Cleveland didn't like being the butt of Fiji's jokes. So they did some tests, and guess what? These tests showed a glass of Fiji water is lower quality, it loses taste tests against Cleveland Tap, and costs thousands of times more. This story is typical of what happens when you test bottled water against tap water. Is it cleaner? Sometimes, sometimes not. In many ways, bottled water is less regulated than tap. Is it tastier? In taste tests across the country, people consistently choose tap over bottled water. These bottled water companies say they're just meeting consumer demand. But who would demand a less sustainable, less tasty, way more expensive product, especially one you can get for almost free in your kitchen? Bottled water costs about 2,000 times more than tap water. Can you imagine paying 2,000 times the price of anything else? How about a $10,000 sandwich? Yet people in the U.S. buy more than half a billion bottles of water every week. That is enough to circle the globe more than five times. How did this come to be? Well, it all goes back to how our materials economy works and one of its key drivers, which is known as manufactured demand. If companies want to keep growing, they have to keep selling more and more stuff. In the 1970s, giant soft drink companies got worried as they saw their growth projections starting to level off. There's only so much soda a person can drink. Plus, it wouldn't be long before people began realizing that soda is not that healthy and turned back to, gasp, drinking tap water. Well, the companies found their next big idea in a silly designer product that most people laughed off as a passing yuppie fad. Water is free, people said back then. What will they sell us next? Air? So how do you get people to buy this fringe product? Simple. You manufacture demand. How do you do that? Well, imagine you're in charge of a bottled water company. Since people aren't lining up to trade their hard-earned money for your unnecessary product, you make them feel scared and insecure if they don't have it. And that's exactly what the bottled water industry did. One of their first marketing tactics was to scare people about tap water with ads like Fiji's Cleveland campaign. When we're done, one top water executive said, tap water will be relegated to showers and washing dishes. Next, you hide the reality of your product behind images of pure fantasy. Have you ever noticed how bottled water tries to seduce us with pictures of mountain streams and pristine nature? But guess where a third of all bottled water in the U.S. actually comes from? The tap. Pepsi's Aquafina and Coke's Dasani are two of the many brands that are really filtered tap water. But the pristine nature lie goes much deeper. In a recent full-page ad, Nestle said, bottled water is the most environmentally responsible consumer product in the world. What? They are trashing the environment all along the product's life cycle. Exactly how is that environmentally responsible? The problems start here with extraction and production, where oil is used to make water bottles. Each year, making the plastic water bottles used in the U.S. takes enough oil and energy to fuel a million cars. All that energy spent to make the bottle, even more to ship it around the planet, and then we drink it in about two minutes? That brings us to the big problem at the other end of the life cycle, disposal. What happens to all these bottles when we're done? 80% end up in landfills, where they will sit for thousands of years, or in incinerators, where they are burned, releasing toxic pollution. The rest gets collected for recycling. I was curious about where the plastic bottles that I put in the recycling bins go. I found out that shiploads were being sent to India, so I went there. 
I will never forget riding over a hill outside Madras where I came face to face with a mountain of plastic bottles from California. Now, real recycling would turn these bottles back into bottles. But that wasn't what was happening here. Instead, these bottles were slated to be downcycled, which means turning them into lower quality products that would just be chucked later. The parts that couldn't be downcycled were thrown away there, shipped all the way to India just to be dumped in someone else's backyard. If bottled water companies want to use mountains on their labels, it would be more accurate to show one of these mountains of plastic waste. Scaring us, seducing us, and misleading us, these strategies are all core parts of manufacturing demand. Once they've manufactured all this demand, creating a new multi-billion dollar market, they defend it by beating out the competition. But in this case, the competition is our basic human right to clean, safe drinking water. Pepsi's vice chairman publicly said, the biggest enemy is tap water. They want us to think it's dirty and bottled water is the best alternative. In many places, public water is polluted thanks to polluting industries like the plastic bottle industry. And these bottled water guys are all too happy to offer their expensive solutions, which keep us hooked on their products. It is time we took back the tap. That starts with making a personal commitment to not buy or drink bottled water unless the water in your community is truly unhealthy. Yes, it takes a bit of foresight to grab a reusable bottle on the way out, but I think we can handle it. Then, take the next step. Join a campaign that's working for real solutions, like demanding investment in clean tap water for all. In the U.S., tap water is underfunded by $24 billion, partly because people believe drinking water only comes from a bottle. Around the world, a billion people don't have access to clean water right now. Yet cities all over are spending millions of dollars to deal with all the plastic bottles we throw out. What if that money was spent improving our water systems, or better yet, preventing pollution to begin with? There are many more things we can do to solve this problem. Lobby your city officials to bring back drinking fountains. Work to ban the purchase of bottled water by your school, your organization, or entire city. This is a huge opportunity for millions of people to wake up and protect our wallets, our health, and the planet. The good news is it's already started. Bottled water sales have begun to drop while business is booming for safe, refillable water bottles. Yay! Restaurants are proudly serving tap, and people are choosing to pocket the hundreds or thousands of dollars they would otherwise be wasting on bottled water. Carrying bottled water is on its way to being as cool as smoking while pregnant. We know better now. The bottled water industry is getting worried because the jig is up. We are not buying into their manufactured demand anymore. We will choose our own demands, thank you very much, and we are demanding clean, safe water for all. So, you can research the bullshit for yourself, but it's so much more that we can do as people to cut the bullshit out and decrease toxins and to help ourselves to live a more healthier life because not just does I'm not just going to play videos on videos like I know for a fact that different plastic has different codes on the bottle of them and if you look up these codes the codes actually let you know if the plastic can be reheated, if it's one time use, what type of toxins is it gonna seep into your drink? Because essentially, when you put something in plastic and it's for a long period of time or it's in heat, it's gonna change and it has harmful things that are going into your body. So the best thing that you can do for yourself is to have a glass bottle, a reusable, you know, so many different, healthier ways that you can go or just use you know one plastic like reusable those sturdy sterile cups that you can carry around with water and what you can do for your tap water a lot of people may not like tap water but you will save money so think about how much money you waste in bottled water and make a budget cut out the bullshit Put it in a rainy day fund. That's what, you know, I'm trying to create a lifestyle of elevating, saving money, 
and just living better. So if you cut out the bottled water bullshit, right, and you just drink your tap water, if you want to boil it for extra, you know, safety, or really what you can do is add lemons and mint, and it's going to naturally make your water alkaline, and it's also going to help cleanse and detox your body. It's great for your skin if you want to add a little cinnamon. It's just so many detox water I mean, things that you can do, like water is life. Our body is more than 70% water. Our cells need water to cleanse, create, and, you know, just do their thing. They live in a meniscus of fluid and plasma. So in order for them to be healthy and smile and, you know, just make you feel good, drink more water and add things to your water, like fruit, if you don't like water. And that also adds another boost to your water and cleans it, make it alkaline and so forth. Okay, so just a little tip for you. Then after that, smoke you a blunt, add some tinctures to the water if you want. What the hell? Some lemon, some sugar, make a lemonade. I mean, do what you do with the water, but water is good for you. Okay, you don't want to drink water. I mean, cut the Pepsi out. That is for real, just horrible. Sodas are death. Sugar, it's like hardening all of your, it's like sclerosis of the liver. So many other things. You just cut out the sugar. Because sugar creates mucus, and mucus is the start of all disease. So, yeah. So, like, do some research every day. Find your passion. Live life lifted. And, you know... That's all. I mean, that's all we can do is try to be better every day, help our kids, help our friends if we have them, if we don't, create, you know, friends, create, or, you know, some people don't want friends, so hey, create whatever the hell you want with yourself, hey, I'm just saying, be happy, okay, eat rainbows, eat amazing healthy food, grow your own DUI, look it up, some vegetables, anything, some salad, like some kale, it can all be grown. Right in your own kitchen or little backyard, you don't even need, like if you live in an apartment, get a pot, it's no excuses over here, okay? Cut the bullshit. Where there's a will, there's a way. And we, hey, so on a lighter note, <laughs> summertime, we all know about those red Solo cups. All around, all around the world, all around. Yeah, red solo cup always have some real good in it. Sometimes you can go places either in the city or, you know, somewhere in the hood and you can get you a little five dollar old cup <laughs> that used to be back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I know about that. I'm from I'm from the city. Uh-huh. Yeah. And and in uh Baltimore they have the slushies. Uh-huh. Oh, in uh, Be More, Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore. They have uh, slushies that be serving out the little solo red cup. Yes, them joints be the best. I always wish they had uh, snow cones is actually what it was called. Snow cones in D.C. I, I, because I had family in Baltimore, so we visit blah, blah, blah. But snow cones were the best. Go to the harbor and you get you some snow cones with a marshmallow on it. It's the bomb yes <laughs> so on a lighter note um whoever watches just so hilarious yes yeah, she's so yes yeah, that's so just she's she's hilarious i watched a little video earlier and she had me dying laughing i was like this girl <laughs> but i was kind of upset that they cut her up about her hair because i'm really sensitive about black hair and just being a woman and when I went natural hmm, it's like it's been so long I don't even know it's been over six years I went through the big chop small chop chopped it all over again all this other stuff but long story short it was a great just liberating experience and also I'm like why in the fuck am I paying 
all of this money like every month, every week. And I was just getting tired. And it's just so exhausting for someone who does not really give a shit about hair. I mean, I care, but it's like for real, like you got to spend two, three, four hundred dollars on hair that ain't even yours. God gave me this hair. Like I always love the hair, but it's like other people don't love and embrace black hair. And that's what really makes me sad. Even black women, we can't embrace it because other people don't embrace it. And in the workplace, it's a stigma. And they're always telling you, like, look professional. Look like, what the fuck? Is, what is professional? Huh? Why can't my natural hair just be professional, okay? I got a smile. The job is getting done. I mean, hello, I'm doing numbers. So I'm just saying, why does hair really matter? Even men like I know we want this illusion of this like long sexy flowing hair but let's be real I mean all hair isn't meant to be the same and us as African-American women have to love and embrace whatever it is however it is and learn that the chemicals and the products that are being sold aren't really for our hair so what we have to do is we have to actually research and learn how to take care of our hair and ourselves and it will retain its natural curl and yes it does take a lot but your hair is beautiful and you're beautiful just how you are like I get so many compliments when I just I'm just thugging it because I don't care like I care but it's like for real I just love my hair how it is and sometimes when you comb it all out you know in the bush then in like 20 minutes it's like however it want to be so you might as well just let it be is how I feel you know sometimes so I just let it be natural and I rock it out and some people they embrace it and they're like sister you are amazing with your natural hair and other people they give you the side eye like this bitch ain't even comb her hair today and I'm just like side on them back like <laughs> bitch I'm happy so mind your business I didn't spend 500 and do all that it's too much it's too much and it's not going back to our culture to our community and we can be going on trips. We can be, like, really living our best life if we didn't have $500 worth of hair sold in our head. And some people don't even have a car or a pot to piss in, but they got $500 worth of hair. I mean, that's that bullshit that don't make sense to me. I'm just trying to say, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it makes sense to you, but, hey, do what you do. It's your life. Yes, I'm going to stay natural. And I'm just in the – I'm like, should I – Go for it and do, um, you know, get the locks, lock it up. I pretty much had every hairstyle there could be, and I never thought that I would ever chop all of my hair off and rock a ball. Like, that was never my imagination growing up as a kid, but, you know, life takes you on many journeys. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's awesome. I like when I used to have, like, the fade and do that. But it's like I need to grow into something else. So I'm on the fence, on the next hair stage, what I'm going to do. But I'll never go back and put that cream of crack in my hair. I'm sorry. I just can't. It's just too much. So I'll just be forever, you know, kinky. I love my natural. So, yeah, that's it for that. <clears throat> and we're going to take a little break. We're going to eat some rainbows. And holla. Nibble.
vernacular. Yeah, yeah. still hitting licks, still flipping nigga bitch like a fish on a spatula. Yeah, yeah. still spinning bread like I got my old job even though I got fired. Yeah, I was feeling hella low, put my resume in, then a nigga got hired. Higher and higher, I climbed till the nigga reached the top, feeling like goddamn, I've been through it all. Knowing damn well that I got rich to pay, but I be damned if a nigga don't stop hit them all. Yeah, stuck, stuck at the mall, hit the club, then a nigga got a stuck at the bar. Stuck, stuntin' for niggas I don't even like till I thought about this shit, like, fuck I'm stuntin' for? Yeah, stuntin', stuntin'. about my fave did you guys know did you know our 26th president of the united states was also the first president to travel outside of the united states and where he went was to panama to the canal and then he also went which they now call the rio roosevelt they named it after him And he traveled on a lovely excursion. But he was also the first president to win a Nobel Peace Prize. Because he's so awesome. And he was the police commissioner of New York. Which goes into my next story. New York has now dropped all prosecution. You know, okay, so when I start, you know, indulging in my favorite, I may slur. So, okay. Uh, Prosecution, all right. A marijuana is now dropped for smoking and possession, as well as in Manhattan, as well as in Georgia, of all places. Well, it's decriminalized, so it's not fully dropped like it is in Manhattan. And But that's a big step for Georgia, which had some of the, like, most they had some of the strictest marijuana laws and people scared to drive through georgia because they don't play like for real you 25 years like one two blunts you like for real so now it's decriminalized and you know it's a movement and each step we have to hip hip hooray because slowly but surely baby the ganja people the green is healing it's coming across. I mean, it can take care of so many things if they use it in the proper way. Like, can the money go to the schools, the kids, to actually rebuilding the infrastructure, the roads, medicine, okay? Like, cures for the people, okay? Okay, because now after hundreds of years... You mofos, okay, you bullshit it on the marijuana, on the ganja, okay? You put all of this front up, you imprisoned so many people, ruined so many families. So if you turn coat now and don't take care of for real people, we have to stick together because as we can see, the bullshit that, you know. So what do you think they're going to do with the plant? So I'm just saying, can we as the people step up? step together, help each other, heal each other, and ultimately take our plant and keep it for the people. We have to do that in order to keep it safe. I mean, that's just how I feel, point blank period. We can go more in depth with this awesome debate convo, but at the end of the day, Ganja Hills, and it's moving across states. And the momentum is picking up. So what are we going to do in our communities? What are we going to teach our kids? How are we going to incorporate it into some form of incentive to feed 
the kids to feed the universe, to learn, to incorporate a more healthy, holistic lifestyle. And to just think that if this is uncovered, that yes, it cures cancer, and yes, it cures this, and all this time that they have said all these bad things, what the fuck else bullshit? What else bullshit? Think, hit the blunt, Tina, Sharice, I mean, Trina, I mean, Sharif, whoever, and just think about it, Amanda, like, seriously, like, what else? Do your research, hit the blunt, click some buttons, and elevate, live your life, and just think about what we are being told and how we can be better as people, as friends, as mothers, as sisters, as brothers. Bunch of bullshit. Peace out until next Wednesday.